Sometimes I feel like there's more to this life than just chasing money, fame, and the spotlight. Sometimes I feel a tug in my soul to do something greater, to play a bigger role. But I don't know what it is or where to start. I don't know how to listen to my heart. I need some guidance, some inspiration, some stories of people who found a higher calling. That's why I tune in to what's called higher. The podcast that lifts me up and takes me higher. The podcast that shows me how to live for God in His kingdom. The podcast that helps me find and follow my higher purpose. We're called higher. Yeah, we're called higher. We're not here to settle for less. We're here to aspire. We're called higher. Yeah, we're called higher. We're here to make a difference. Uh, we're here to be a fire. Uh, every episode is a blessing to my ears. I hear stories of people who overcame their fears. People who stepped out of their comfort zone. People who follow God's voice and left their own. People who are living in higher purpose. People who are serving others and making an impact. I learn from their lessons, their wisdom, their faith. I get motivated to pursue my own higher way. That's why I tune into what called higher. The podcast that lifts me up and takes me higher. The podcast that shows me how to live for God and His kingdom. The podcast that helps me find and follow my higher purpose. We're called higher, yeah, we're called higher. We're not here to settle for less, we're here to aspire. We're called higher, yeah, we're called higher. We're here to make a difference, we're here to be a fire. So if you're feeling like there's more to life than what you see, if you're feeling a stirring in your heart to do something more for God and His kingdom, then join me and tune into. We're called higher, yeah, we're called higher. We're not here to settle for less, we're here to aspire. We're called higher, yeah, we're called higher. We're here to make a difference, we're here to be a fire, uh. Good morning. Welcome to We're Called Higher, a podcast where we explore the deeper meaning of God's word and how it can transform our lives. I'm your host, Jared Wright, and I'm so glad you're joining me today. Let's start with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and this opportunity to share your message with your people. We ask that you open our hearts and minds to receive your truth and grace. We pray that you speak to us through your word and inspire us to live a life with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See, we got people already in chat this morning, so just thank y'all for being here. Uh, So today we're going to talk about the different ways we relate to God and how we can experience a more intimate and fulfilling relationship with him. Our scripture for today is Titus Chapter three, verses four and five from the Amplified Version, which says, But when the goodness and kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared in human form as the man, Jesus Christ, he saved us, not because of any any works or of righteousness that we have done, but because of his own compassion and mercy by the cleansing of the new birth, spiritual transformation, regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. This verse tells us that God loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins and give us a new life in him. He did not do this because we deserved it or we earned it, but because of his grace and mercy. He wants us to be his children and to have a close relationship with him. But how do we relate to God? How do we view him and ourselves? In this book that I'm reading, which I love, I'm going to show you guys what it is real quick. It's a uh, radical wisdom by Reggie Campbell. He shares four different identities that we often adopt in relation to God and our faith. He also suggests the fifth identity that God desires for us. And it's titled life with God. The ideas that follow were inspired by and taken from another book called with Reimagining the Way You Relate to God by Sky Jathani, which Reggie highly recommends. I haven't read that book yet, but this is what it says. Here are four different identities. Which one most describes you in relation to God and your faith? The first one is, I am a sinner. The second, 
I am a manager. The third, I am a consumer. And the fourth, I am a servant. If you checked I am a sinner, then you likely live under the constant threat of God's wrath and punishment. You must appease his will through strict obedience to moral and spiritual commands. You live your life under God. If you checked, I am a manager, you're an autonomous being who has been given a divine manual for operating your life and world and whose fate will ultimately rest upon how well you implement God's principles and instructions. This is life over God. For those who checked, I am a consumer, you're likely discontent inside because of unmet desires and longings. You want God to orbit around you and fulfill your expectations in life. This is life from God. And if you checked, I am a servant. You think you get huge credit for being on mission from God. Your sense of value is inexorably tied to what you're able to accomplish and the magnitude of your impact on the world. This is life for God. We want safety by appeasing God with our behavior. We turn our faith into a checklist of to do's and to don'ts thinking will curry favor with the creator through good behavior. Like a genie in a bottle, we want God to grant our wishes if we live out his principles. We insulate ourselves from the very God we seek by working ourselves to death, building the kingdom. So where's the fifth box? Because I don't like the sound of any of those. For most of us, one of these four descriptions hits, hits us where we live and illustrates how we've misinterpreted or interpreted the life God wants for us, a life with God. From Eden to paradise, that's what he wants. That's all he ever wanted. But instead of embracing his love and leaning into a real relationship, we try to use him instead of walking with him and living consistently aware that he is with us. When you saw the four identity boxes above, or when you heard them, you probably thought, well, none of these are bad. And they aren't. But God has so much more for each of us. Somewhere out there in the future, after we've lived our life here, he's going to show us a white stone with his secret name for us on it. That's in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. It'll be a just between you and me moment. Because God is a just between you and me kind of, kind of being. It'll be a father to son or father to daughter. That's how personal, intimate, and intense his love is for us. Can you wean yourself off the for God, from God, under God, and over God postures? Here's the challenge at the bottom of the uh, the page. Will you change your narrative from, I just want to do God's will, to he is with me and I am with him? Can you learn to walk and rest in his presence? regardless of what's coming uh, what's coming at you. Can you live it out knowing that he is here and he is enough? And that's, that's just powerful. Something that um, I was talking to my wife about yesterday is, you know, we were, she was talking to me or sharing something with me about something that you can put on your, your mouth to create jewelry or jewelry that you can put on your face that will create dimples. And I said to her, I said, people want to be everything but themselves. And I'm huge on identity. And like we are running from the things that we are created to be. And it hurts my heart that we are, we are in existing this way. Um, so for, for us to have that conversation today and for me to read this today, it's like, man, um, identity is such a huge, huge thing right now in our, in our society. And I think it always has been, but. Just that page in this particular lesson today, the devotion today was so powerful. Uh, thank you, Reggie, for sharing this insight with us. I don't know about you, but I want to live a life with God, not under, over, from, or for him. I want to know him and love him as he knows and loves me. I want to experience his presence and his peace in every situation. I want to be his child and his friend. But how do we do that? How do we cultivate a life with God? Well, I think the first step is to recognize that God is with us. He is not distant or detached. 
He is not angry or aloof. He is not demanding or disappointed. He is with us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the Holy Spirit who lives in us and guides us. He is the Father who loves us and cares for us. He is the Son who died for us and lives for us. That's God. The second step is to respond to his presence, to acknowledge him and thank him, to worship him and praise him, to listen to him and obey him, to trust him and follow him, to talk to him and hear him, to love him and serve him, to enjoy him and share him. The third step is to reflect his presence, to let his light shine through us, to let his love flow from us to let his grace touch others, to let his truth set people free, to let his power work in us and through us, to let his glory be seen in us and around us. These are some of the ways that we can live a life with God. And as we do, we will discover the joy and the purpose that he has for us. We will grow in our relationship with him and become more like him. We will experience his peace and his power in every circumstance. We will fulfill his will and his plan for our lives. So here are some uh, takeaways from today's podcast. God loves us and wants us to have a close relationship with him. We often adopt different identities that hinder us from experiencing a life with God. God desires for us to live a life with him, not under, over, from, or for him. We can live a life with God by recognizing, responding to, and reflecting his presence. Living a life with God will bring us joy, purpose, peace, and power. And here are some questions to pray, meditate, and socialize for the day. Which identity do you most relate to? Sinner, manager, consumer, or servant? How does that affect your relationship with God? Second question, what are some practical ways you can live a life with God in your daily routine? How can you recognize, respond to, and reflect his presence? I encourage you to share your answers and thoughts with God, with yourself, and with others. You can also share this podcast with your friends and family and invite them to join the conversation. Let's spread the message of God's love and grace to the world. Let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and your presence. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to save us and give us a new life in you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives in us and guides us. Help us to live a life with you, not under, over, from, or for you. Help us to recognize, respond to, and reflect your presence in every situation. Help us to grow in our relationship with you and become more like you. Help us to fulfill your will and your plan for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to We're Called Higher. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. I'll see you next time. God bless you.